Welcome to Thoughts on Political Theology, a podcast exploring the intersection between theology and politics. I'm your host, André Gagné, professor in theological studies at Concordia University in Montreal. Today, uh, I will be discussing why political theology. You probably noticed the change in my Substack uh, account name to Thoughts in Political Theology. And you probably just realized that uh, the music and the intro were much more smoother. Um, Because, you know, my other intro, I really liked it. It was great. But I changed the name. And also, uh, maybe the tempo, uh, a tempo change is, is good. The other one was very upbeat. This one is more reflective, uh, Baroque style of uh, a classical guitar. And, um, you know, we're, we're really in a fast-paced world. And I want these uh, podcasts to be more reflective, uh, more calm, more... Uh, Uh, thoughtful um, in the sense that uh, we're not always running after uh, our time and and just kind of relaxed. So giving you a bit of background to this change, essentially what I explained in my post, because I provided a post explaining very briefly the change of name, was to really illustrate what I've been doing in the past couple of years. And I think it's it's pretty much reflective even of my own uh, career as an academic. Uh, I remember when I uh, began at the bachelor's level, I did a bachelor's in theology at the uh, Université de Montréal. And um, of course, I was very much interested in biblical studies, as I am still today. My work was, uh, a lot of the courses that I was taking were in biblical studies, but I was also taking various types of courses around questions of theology, uh, the role of theology in in society, um, various things, foundational theology, but very practical stuff in terms of theology also. So for me, theology has always been something of an interest. Uh, I am (laughs) a full professor in theological studies, and I've always been very much interested in theological ideas and more uh, more and more how those ideas relate to politics. So in my bachelor's, I did a lot of biblical studies, uh, and my my journey was uh, in theological studies. Then I moved to the master's degree, and I was still in a department of theological studies. Actually, it was a faculty uh, of theology, and uh, I specialized in biblical studies. And I remember when I was doing biblical studies, uh, I really enjoyed it. I learned the ancient languages, and I studied more specifically in uh, my master's, the Gospel of John, and I was interesting. I, I was interested in the characterization of two figures in the Gospel of John, uh, Judas Iscariot and the figure of Satan or the devil, and how that played in terms of uh, the Johannine community, the community of John the writers, issues around insiders, outsiders. So there was a a kind of a political aspect to uh, the work that I was doing. Even the first articles that I I published as a graduate student uh, was was around the Bible and politics. I remember one of the first articles was on Mark chapter 5, the the, uh, Gerasene demoniac, and how that was a kind of social critical commentary uh, against the Roman Empire at the time. The demon is called Legion, uh, which is interesting. Um, So 
I was always kind of interested in the relationship between theology, Bible, politics. And this eventually led me, of course, to doing a PhD. My PhD was more specifically on apocryphal literature, but again, the intrigue of why is was this literature put aside? Now, what were the uh, maybe the social reasons, political reasons why, for example, the Gospel of Thomas was not part of the canon? Um, of course, I, I did my work on the Gospel of Thomas, and a lot of it was about interpretation. But this 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 attract you know this the fact that I was attracted to uh, non canonical texts. Why? Um, again, maybe you know something latent politically uh, <laughs> was behind, was really behind my motivations, and of course I, I became professor. And uh, uh, since a couple of years now, I've been really, really focused on American politics, uh, uh, the interrelation between religion and politics. But but if you look at my work, if you read, you've been following me either on Twitter or on my YouTube channel. Um, conferences that I gave or public talks or even the public uh, writing, uh, really much interested, as you are aware, about theological ideas. For me, theological ideas are important to understand why people do certain things. It's much more than just uh, group dynamic. Um, you know, I, I understand that from a social scientific perspective or from the perspective of sociology, we focus a lot on group dynamics, which is important. But I think at the same time, uh, we, cannot, we cannot abstain ourselves from really understanding theology. Ideas have consequences, in a sense, either good or bad, and people are really motivated by what they think. Um, it's like it's like in in terms of let's say we study uh, extremism. Um, you won't have any mobilization on the part of people that have grievances but are are not mobilized or have no ideology. And uh, the contrary is also, or the opposite idea is also true. If people have ideology but without any grievance. Uh, nothing happens. Uh, it's a combination often when we study extremism, for example. It's a combination of ideology and grievances. The, these, are, these work together, and ideas often serve as a way to interpret uh, grievances. So theological ideas um, are important. Theology is important. And this is why I want to take some time through this podcast, through writing, I'll be continuing uh, research at Concordia and teaching at Concordia in the fields of political theology. Even my book on evangelical supporters of Trump, the book that I wrote in French and hopefully is coming out uh, in English very soon, uh, is about political theology in a sense. Uh, it's understanding how certain individuals have certain theological ideas, certain political Ideas, uh, a certain political theology. Uh, in the case of uh, my book, I talk about, for example, uh, dominion uh, or dominionism. That's a political theology of power. So, again, we can talk about various groups, how they react or interact with politics, and we're in the field of political theology. So, theological ideas are important, and this is why. Uh, I want to spend some time uh, studying that and sharing some thoughts on this important topic. Now, why and what is political theology? I'd like to maybe, uh, just before I unpack this very briefly, uh, just uh, read two quotes in reaction to 9-11. Huh? Two quotes by, by two different authors, and it's going to be very re revealing uh, their stance on theology huh? or religion in r relation to society or politics. The first quote is by um, Richard Dawkins uh, in a book called A Devil's Chaplain, Reflections on Hope, Lies, and Science and Love. And he says this, quote, My vestige of hands-off religion, respect, disappeared in the smoke and choking dusk of 
dust of September 11, 2001, followed by the National Day of Prayer when prelates and pastors did their tremulous uh, Martin Luther King impersonation and urge people of mutually incompatible faiths to hold hands, united in homage to the very force that caused the problem in the first place. It is time for people of intellect, as opposed to people of faith, to stand up and say, enough. So that's, you know, and we know very well uh, uh, Richard Dawkins. We're familiar with his ideas. Uh, We understand where he comes from, uh, his opposition to um, religion in the public sphere. And it's not surprising that we would have this kind of comment after 9-11. The other quote comes from a scholar Mark Jurgensmeyer in his book entitled Terror in the Mind of God, The Global Rise of Religious Violence. And this is what he says in reaction also in the context of 9-11. Quote, This historical moment of global transformation has provided an occasion for religion with all its images and ideas to be reasserted as a public force. Lurking in the background of much of religion's unrest and the occasion for its political revival, I believe, is the virtually global devaluation of secular authority and the need for alternative ideologies of public order. It may be one of ironies of uh, one of the ironies of history, graphically displayed in the incidents of terrorism, that the answers to the questions of why the contemporary world still needs religion, and of why it has suffered such public acts of violence, are surprisingly the same. End of quote. So you have two different perspectives. Uh, Dawkins, uh, we should we should shun religion. Uh, it is uh, the uh, it is the manifestation of those that don't use their intellect, and you have Jurgensmeyer that pleads and and speaks of the public resurgence of religion that has been stifled by secularism, and there is a need to take religion into account. Now, when we look at this, we can try to understand what po- political theology is. How, how can we uh, assess these claims uh, about religion and politics? How can we understand them? So maybe a, a brief definition. There's many definitions of, of uh, political theology, but I found one that is very interesting uh, by uh, Scott and Kavanaugh, who edited the Blackwell Companion of to political theology, they say this. They 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 give a very simple definition, but I think it's to the point. They say this: theology is broadly understood as discourse about God and human persons as they relate to God. The political is broadly understood as the use of structural power to organize a society or community of people. Political theology is then the analysis and criticism of political arrangements, including cultural, psychological, social, and economic aspects, from the perspective of differing interpretations of God's ways with the world. So theology is that. It's the understanding of the relation between uh, God or the divine or transcendence and how the world is organized. Huh? So theology is very much interested in modes of being, of ontology. It's very much interested in epistemology, modes of knowing. How do we know what we know? And are, di- are, are there different modes of knowing? And also, theology is very much concerned with uh, politics also. Uh, So politics fits into all of this. Now, in terms of uh, the the idea of political theology, where does that actually come from? Political theology did not begin within Christian theology. 
we have very early on Western notions of the polis, the city, and the political that emerged in Greece, in the Hellenistic city-state. Uh, for example, politics at the time was seen as the science and art of seeking the common good. So the idea of political theology, uh, if you think about it as a concept, uh, political theology, was first found in Rome. Uh, we see it in uh, the writings and the, th the thinking of the Stoics. They distinguish between three types of gods and therefore three types of theology because theology, theo, Logos as the discourse uh, on God eh? or the discourse on the divine or on transcendence. So they saw three types of gods or three types. We can correspond this to kind of three types of theology. First of all, the personified forces of nature, uh, which we can understand as being natural theology, or the gods of legend, uh, mythical theology, And lastly, and, but, but very importantly, the officially worshipped gods of the city, of the polis. And this corresponds to political theology. Now, when we think in terms of Christian political theology, this, of course, began through the work of early theologians. Now, we think about Augustine, for example. Uh, this this uh, writer, uh, where he's known for many, many uh, of his writings, confessions, but the, his famous City of God, an early 5th century common era uh, uh, text, where he compares and con contrasts the uh, Christian tradition with other existing political philosophies at the time. And You had other authors, uh, not only Augustine, but other authors throughout the Middle Ages that also have reflected on the relationship between theology and, and, and politics. And we have authors like Aquinas. Uh, we have from the Protestant tradition Luther and Calvin. But when we think of the modern way of conceptualizing and understanding political theology, the idea of political theology was brought back into use most famously by Carl Schmitt, uh, this German legal political theorist uh, who lived from 1888 to 1985, uh, who wrote, uh, for example, his famous political theology, four chapters on the concept of sovereignty. And of course, Schmitt is a, an extremely controversial figure. He worked in official appointments for the Nazi regime. Uh, he was an author of many legal studies defending Nazi racial policies. And we know that he lost his academic post. Uh, he eventually retreated into exile after the war. And uh, we know also that Schmidt was a Catholic and that since his death, The theological aspects of his work receive scholarly attention from theologians. And it's really due to Schmidt's work that the phrase political theology resurfaced in the 20th century. And it really gave birth to a new discipline within academic theology. So as a discipline, academic theology is, uh, academic political theology, sorry, is actually a 20th, uh, 20th century uh, idea uh, and concept. And th this is a, a now a discipline on its, in its own terms. Now, what's important for us to understand, and that has caught the attention of theologians and scholars, um, is that according to Schmidt, This, this is something you have to remember from this. Is, it's this, and I wrote it actually in my uh, short blog post uh, about the name change. According to Schmidt, all significant concepts of the modern theory of the state are secularized theological concepts. Okay? All significant concepts of the modern theory of the state 
our secularized theological concept. So you'll find this in his uh, political theology. Uh, you'll find this, this quote, uh, which, is, which is significant. Um, this helps us understand, for example, how ideas, as one example, ideas of salvation, duty, devotion that people have uh, were once, uh, th- those ideas that who, who were once reserved for the church and for God have eventually migrated in the modern era to the nation state. So you'll have these same ideas of duty, devotion, even salvation, tied now to the nation state. So there was never the creation of a secular state or sphere where marks of religious belief and devotion are absent. What happened, rather, is that those marks were transposed. People began to look to the state as the provider of salvation or health. The word salvation is is health also. It's uh, uh, being healed, uh, being being well, essentially. We have the notions of salvation only in terms of transcendence, but no, it means also health. Um, So the state being the provider of health and considered the body politic worthy of their loyalty and devotion, like when people go to war. Uh, People are ready to die for the state. Uh, At one time, people were dying for God or for the church. So these ideas have migrated. These were theological ideas, concepts. They have migrated to the modern state. Now, in this podcast, I'm going to end here, but in this podcast, we'll we'll explore some of these ideas um, that... You know, theological ideas underpin a lot of uh, ideas and notions and assumptions that we have in the modern world today. Um, So theology has a lot to speak about in terms of these notions. Theology has a lot to speak about even economics or, or, you know, various types of fields that can interact with Uh, notions that are theological in nature. But for our purpose, we're going to look at politics. We're going to look at how people uh, that have faith uh, view their role uh, in society and how they understand their obligations in terms of the political. Uh, What we will see is sometimes the theology is pretty bad because the consequences are not... Uh, uh, you know, have have terrible, terrible. Um, yeah, they're actually very bad in terms of consequences. Uh, violence er- erupts, um, exclusion happens, and, and sometimes people use theology and their ideas to legitimize some of their positions. Uh, that are very damage, damageable for society, damageable for individuals and for groups. Um, so we'll see that. Uh, so we'll continue exploring notions of political theology. We will be talking about various authors that deal with the political. Uh, we'll talk about various theological currents like liberation theology, nouvelle theologie also, or what is often labeled as new theology, um, a very important uh, phenomenon that, that uh, uh, was, uh, was in operation and is still uh, in operation today since the middle of the 20th century, and something called also radical theology, uh, or radical, I should say, orthodoxy, which is fascinating in and of itself also. Um, so we'll talk about this, and we'll talk about various authors like Schmidt, Moltmann, Herbermas, uh, Bonhoeffer, for example, Barth, uh, De Lubac, Daniel Lou, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, ancient authors also like Augustine and Gregory of Nyssa, Tertullian, Ambrose, Uh, Of course, uh, Aquinas, Luther, Calvin, Hobbes. Uh, So it should be interesting. Um, I don't know if there's going to be a podcast every week, but like I said, I want this to be relaxed. 
uh, no pressure, and uh, hopefully these will be uh, uh, useful somehow. So thank you for taking this time to listen to Thoughts on Political Theology, and uh, we'll see each other, or you're going to hear me again uh, soon. Now, my discussion of political theology, the descriptions that I gave, uh, you will find this information in much more detail in a fascinating book, A Guide to the Perplexed, called Political Theology by Elizabeth Phillips. I encourage you to get the book. Uh, A lot of the information uh, that I've shared in terms of descriptions, uh, the, the the various uh, ways of uh, understanding political theology, a bit of the history, uh, you will find this in the introduction of her book. Thank you for listening to Thoughts on Political Theology, a podcast exploring the intersection between theology and politics. You can subscribe to this podcast on the Thoughts on Political Theology Substack page, where you will also find additional podcasts and resources. Kindly consider sharing this podcast with those who might be interested, and stay tuned for more episodes of Thoughts on Political Theology.